How, how do you guys feel? It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Mr. Chris Columbus to the stage. Scene with Pierce after Robin rips off the Mercedes hood ornament. 
that sequence, I never knew what was going to come out of his mouth. That would take eight or nine, and then Pierce was the same way. So Pierce's reaction, or the reactions are completely honest. And that's a testament to him as an actor. I think the person you see smiling through the movie, which is interesting for me seeing it on a big screen with an audience, is Robin. Robin would crack himself up at things he said. He was so shocked, I think, that he even said it. Um, that when, when he said, um, you know, did you bring cocktail sauce? Uh, uh, we all in the crew kind of knew where he was going. But you can see Robin kind of holding, but he knew what he was going to say, but he's, even under all that makeup, he's holding back his laugh. That's so amazing. We have time for a couple quick questions. Yes, sir, go ahead. Um, so I've actually heard stories that Robin Williams would go out as Mrs. Doubtfire to adult shops and be Mrs. Doubtfire to these buildings. I think he was, I mean, he wasn't going out to adult shops for himself. He was, that was when we were probably testing the costume to see if it w was working. Um, <laughs> So I know he went to a couple of delis. I know he did go to one adult shop somewhere in North Beach. <laughs> so I don't know if he bought anything. He never shared that with me. But uh, it, the costume was good enough in real life that it fooled people. That it completely fooled people. It's uh, it's so funny like the, the way time moves because his shitty apartment in North Beach is. Uh, I would like. I'll move in there. That's fine. <laughs> $3 million yes. I would like a time machine. Another question? Dude, rapid fire questions. Trust Back there. Me. Tell you a little bit about Robin Williams. Well, Robin was like the sweetest, nicest man you'd ever meet. It was it was really true. And off off camera, he was just a very gentle, kind person. He wasn't, you know, always the Robin Williams you see on, on screen. Um, but he was probably the hardest working actor I've ever worked with. We used to call him on Doubtfire the hardest working man in show business uh, after James Brown. And really, he was. He was truly uh, devoted. He wanted to get it. He wanted to get every moment right. When he was doing the scene where Mrs. Selner comes into his apartment and he has to change between Daniel and and he's taking off the, the suit and. He would change, that was like a, a speech. Every time it was a different speech, and the poor script supervisor couldn't write it down fast enough. And then we, I would yell, cut, and he would say to her, what did I just say? And she's still writing. And it was, he was committed to, he was committed to his character and his craft. I've never seen anyone work harder in my, ever since then. That's, that's so awesome. Um, I think the rest of you is, but we have time for one more question. Go ahead, yours. I've seen pieces of it on TV. Together. So what is, what's the biggest feeling you have? What was the biggest thing you noticed having seen it all together? There is that quality on the, on the films I've done that have worked for an audience and, have, you know, that some haven't, but the ones that have are movies that we really went into saying we want to make this timeless. We don't want it to feel like it was made uh, 23 years ago or 20 years ago when it's, you know, we think about those movies like Home Alone and Potter and Doubtfire <laughs> particularly about when you're watching it 20, 30 years from now on TV, it has to feel fresh. Now, there's some things you can't control. You can't control some of the 90s outfits. <laughs> uh, they're back, though. It's they're fine. Back. You, can't, you can't control the smoking, non-smoking sections. But um, <laughs> what, what was remarkable to me, except for a couple of jokes, like, I'm not a crook, which I'm like, how many people remember the next time? <laughs> this is part of it. But 95% of the jokes still work for an audience, and it feels like those great previews, we used to have great previews of this, this movie, as you can imagine. And our only problem with the previews was cutting. There was a little too much emotional, dramatic, uh, too many dramatic scenes in the film initially, so we had to cut back on those. It was a matter of cutting back the comedy just a little, because there was, there was really too, we had too much good stuff. So tonight seeing it was just, it was. It took me back to 1993 in a great way. The movie feels like it holds up, so that's nice. Can we? I know we're all caught up in Mr. Columbus, but can we like think about it for a second and think about? I think we're all kind of on the same page here. Uh, this guy is like.
inform how we love movies. So <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. This is great. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's happening?